Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Blender 3.2 was recently released, at least as of the time I'm recording this, and one of the really cool new features in that release is new painting tools. Now, there's a ton to like in Blender 3.2. If you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend you do so, but the parts I'm focusing on today are the new painting tools. There's a new paintbrush, new uh, smear brush, masking by color, and color filter tools. We'll look at all of those things today, but I'm also going to show you how to actually use these in the real world. So not only how you can actually paint in Blender, but how you can get it to render and how you can export it out as a texture. So without further ado, let us jump in. So here we are. This is Blender 3.2 running. I, I thought it was suitable to have an appropriate looking scene. Uh, so we have this, this nice little easel for us to work with. Uh, and what we're going to do is paint. Uh, so let me just, we're not going to need a timeline. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, and let's move this guy over a little bit. Now, in order to work with this guy, what you're going to need is vertexes to paint on. So I've got this canvas set up. It's just a straightforward quad. And you're going to notice I go into edit mode. There's not a lot of vertices. And you're going to need vertices in order to paint on the vertexes. So let's add some. Simplest way to do, go into edge mode, select everything, and we'll just do some subdivisions. So subdivide, uh, more, 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 more. All right, so that's plenty of vertices. Now, do keep in mind, it will do an automatic blend between the different vertexes, so you probably don't need too, too many, but you need to have something for the paint to stick to, if that makes any sense. Okay, so we're good to go. So we're back now to object mode. Now, the nice thing about this painting mode is you don't need to do any UV texturing at all. You basically can just start painting directly on the vertices. That's the nice thing about painting with the vertices. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is, well, we've got vertex paint. This isn't vertex paint we're talking about today. Instead, what you're doing is going into sculpt mode. Go to sculpt mode and we'll go take a look at all the various different brushes that are available down the side here. And what you'll notice is scroll on down and you will find paint. That is the star of the show today. Now paint, go over here to tools and you will have control over the brush. So let's go ahead and just pick a blue color and let's paint on the surface. Now I am no artist. I have to warn you that up front. So I'm just going to show you what you can do. You, you're going to have to apply your own artistic talent. But as you can see, straightforward uh, painting there. And as paint shows up over paint, you see there, um, it overlaps and handles it accordingly. We also over here, we now have a smear brush, which, you know, if you've worked with uh, any painting program, you're probably already familiar with smear. It is speed sensitive. Uh, so you can do some really neat results there. Let's go back to the paintbrush for a second here. Do keep in mind, you do have controls over, for example, you can create your own fixed color palette, which is often quite useful. You also have control over a number of aspects of the brush. So, and you can create your own uh, variety of brushes. You can create a number of brushes and switch between them if you so wish. You do have control over it, so you can paint with a texture. You've got stroke controls and so on, but all of the new stuff here is in the brush controls. Uh, you'll see here you have a wet mix. So I'll show you a variety of different strokes here. So there, let's increase the wet mix there and more so. So if you're kind of going for that watercolory look, you've got that control there. Again, they do interact. The paint layers do interact with each other. Uh, you've also got wet persistence. So let's turn wet mode, wet mix down like that. And let's turn the persistence down and let's turn the persistence up. So there are the, the various different options you've got here. You've also got um, controls over the tip roundness. So here we can make it more of a, a square or a juddering effect. Um, and yeah, you, your tra traditional paint media controls are all here. By the way, this does work uh, just fine uh, with stylus. You've got the control pressure sensitivity over things. Um, you also have control over how the blending works. Your traditional uh, blend modes are all here. So if you want to do a linear light paint, you can paint that way. You see how it interacts with the other layers. So all of the tools you would expect from a traditional painting program are now here. So something like a fractal, a fractal painter kind of approach to natural media painting, you can do that directly inside of Blender. Again, you also have the smear tool, but we have a couple of other options here as well. We have the new color filter right here. And you're going to notice here, this is for all of the unmasked areas. So right now, since I don't have anything masked, everything will happen. So this is hue. And we can change that by moving around this way. We've also got um, so all these other different values here. So saturation, we can change the saturation levels. And of course, we've got contrast and so on. So you've got control over all of these various different values using color filters. Now, I mentioned earlier on masking by color. I can come in here and I can pick a color like so. It'll mask all of that selection out. So now when I go back to, uh, say, this color filter here, it's only doing the unmasked area, as you can see. By the way, uh, if you want to get rid of the mask, go back to mask by color, 
mask and you can change all your, you can refine your mask and so on up here. Uh, but we can also basically go clear the mask and we are good to go. So here is our wonderful painting. Uh, it, again, it is all controlled via the paint brush here in the sculpt. But now what you're going to find is when you leave your masterwork, so let's, let's just add a little bit more detail around the edges for reasons that will become a little bit more apparent later on. So here is my artistic masterpiece. That That is a thing of beauty, I have to say. Now that when you're done it, should we leave sculpt mode? We'll go back to object mode and everything looks smashingly good in viewport shading. So let's switch over to uh, the uh, other shading. Oh, what about rendered? Oh, all right. So you do have a definite issue here. And this is one of those things you've got to be aware of when you are working with it. So this canvas here, we'll go down to the um, object data selection here and go to attributes. You'll see it painted in the color attribute. But what we now need to do is with our canvas selected, go to materials and create a material for this guy. So we have a new material. So let's go open up the shader editor. So let's bring this guy over here, go on down to shader editor like so. And in order to get that showing up, we have to use that color paint attribute to, to fill in our color layer or to fill in whichever layer we wish it to be. So let's go ahead and we're going to add a new layer of type input color attribute. Just drop that in there and all you have to do ping that guy into there and presto, you're good to go. This will also work in your EV rendering or your cycles rendering, depending on which version you are using. Now what happens if you want to have this guy exported as a texture map? So that's the problem here. You're working 100% with vertex information so far. So the nice thing is you didn't have to do any UV unwrapping and you're not dealing with texture maps. But a lot of game engines or other tools require texture maps. They may not work with vertex information. So how do we deal with that? Well, that is a multi-step process and it's called baking to texture. And it's not that hard, but it's not that intuitive. So first thing you need to do is give it a target. So we're going to do a couple of things here. So I'm going to move this guy over a little bit so you'll see. And what we need to do, we need another window. So we're going to need an image. So we're going to go over to image editor. We're going to create a new texture and I'm going to call this guy um, uh, texture render target. So here's where you'd set the resolution. So right now, 1024 by 1024 or 1K by 1K works for me. So we'll go ahead and we will create that texture right here. Now, what you got to do back in your shader editor, you need to give, you need to attach an image node to your material. You don't need to link it to anything particularly, but you do need to add it. So we're going to go here, add texture, image texture, like so. And now I'm just going to drop this down and we will pick our render target like so. So there we go. We are now ready to go. We have a target to render towards. Uh, we have a place to put it right here. Uh, now what we need to do, unfortunately, is UV unwrap this guy. So it's something we haven't done in the past. So I'm just going to go here and we're going to switch over to the UV editor. We'll come over here. We will switch into the edit mode right here. So we got all of the vertices selected. So if you don't press A to select all of the vertices and then hit U to bring up the unwrapping menu, or you can also do it here, UV. And what you want to do is just do a smart UV project and sure. So we'll let it just unwrap for us. And what that'll do over here is unwrap. So there with everything selected, you can see the unwrapping job it did for our canvas. Not the best thing in the world. You may have wanted to, un if you knew you were going to render to target, you may want to manually unwrap it yourself, but this will work just fine, especially with the vertex information. It should bake out regardless to how stupid your uh, UV layout actually is. So there we go. We are now got a UV uh, unwrapping for our scene here. So let's switch back here to object mode again. We are unwrapped. We are good to go in that regard. Now all we have left to do, so I'm going to move this guy back to the shader editor. And what we are going to do is switch our renderer. So come on up to here, switch from EV over to cycles. Now, once you're in cycles, if you scroll on down, what you're going to notice is you have a tab called bake. And what bake can do is basically it takes all the lighting information, the, the emission, everything else in the scene. Now notice our scene is pretty dark. What you're going to probably want to do if you're going to be exporting out is add a strong ambient light so that it renders because you're going to get a dark render like this. So what you probably want to do once again is go into your scene and add um, some kind of a light. So we'll do a, a light. We'll just do a point light. All right. So G, Y, let's move it this way. G, Z, let's, oops. G, Z, let's move it up like so. Uh, with our lights selected, let's let's uh, crank up the power. All right, so we got a powerful light in front of our object here. Let's change the radius out a little bit. All right, so we have this, oops, no, I didn't actually want to do that. Let's, let's 
Let's bring that guy back down. All right. So now we have a uh, the light source in here. It should give us a bit of a brighter texture. But when you're rendering out the texture, you want to make sure your lighting is there because this is going to be part of the capturing. All right. So we've got that now. We have our EV settings. What you want to do once again is go down to bake. Make sure that target is set to image textures and not color attributes, or it's actually going to bake over top of itself in the vertex information, which is not ideal. Uh, pick all of the things you want. So you want direct lighting? Yes. Do you want indirect lighting? Up to you. Do you want to capture diffuse glossy transmission and uh, emission? Sure. So we're good with all these things. Of course, you're going to probably want to set up the number of rays and all the other stuff for your cycles uh, setup. I'm also going to switch this over to GPU compute. Okay, so I've switched over to GPU compute. Now what I'm going to do is head on down here, select our canvas like so. So it is now selected and we just hit the bake button. Now since the second that is done, you will see down here, it starts doing a texture bake. Now this can be, this is a very Microsoft-y progress bar in that it shows us being like four or 5% and then boom, it's done. Uh, but if it goes a long time, I'll just do an edit. So presto, we are now finished. And ta-da, there we go. We now have a rendered texture. So there is all of the front-facing polygons of this guy, other than a little bit of the bleed over at the edges in the other sides of the UV. Uh, rendered out. So there is your texture. You could then use that in a game if you so wish. So for example, I could come up here. We could get rid of this guy completely. And we could start using this texture instead. Now you'll notice the, there's a little asterisk besides image. Uh, you're going to want to save it somewhere, physically save it. So um, sure. Texture render target, we'll save that on my desktop. And now what I could do is basically come in here, I'll go add texture, image texture, and we'll load that from file from where we just saved it. So right here, we'll open that guy up, load that in, and we can drop that in as our input, and there you go. So no longer are we being fed by the um, a vertex information, we're now being fed by the texture map. So you could now use that texture map in whatever kind of game you wish. Now do keep in mind, you, you can't paint this. This is a traditional texture at this point in time. But as you saw, you can easily render these things out to texture as we saw in this video. So again, all of the magic sauce, everything that's uh, new here is in the sculpting mode here. So sculpt, the new paint tools are down here under paint and also smear. And then also the uh, mask by color and the color filter stuff. It's some pretty powerful things went into this release. It's pretty cool. You could actually use Blender as a full-blown natural media painting tools. And then as you saw, if you wanna actually render that vertex information out, you need to come into your shader and you need to set it up as add uh, and then input color attribute and you tie that into your color mode like that. And then all of your um, your vertex painting information will show up in your rendered image. And then if you want to bake it out to texture, we just showed you that process as well. So it's a genuinely useful feature. Uh, there's a couple steps to use it if you're going to be exporting outside of the Blender world. Uh, I don't know well how well the GLTF2 or USD exporters handle the vertex stuff, and a lot of game engines simply won't. So you're going to have to know how to bake to texture. But as you saw, it's not that hard of a process, and it's a really cool tool. So if you want to paint natural style directly inside of Blender 3.2, you can do that now. Hopefully you found that useful. Uh, let me know what you think. Comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.